Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday. And in the news this morning, Jamaican firefighter dead, another Jamaican seriously injured after Michigan stabbing. A 33-year-old Jamaican man said to be a firefighter is dead after being stabbed during an altercation in Gaylord, Michigan. The deceased has been identified as Shamir Mary. Another Jamaican is said to be in hospital with serious injuries. According to a report, about 3 p.m., police officers arrived at a scene at the Sunfrog Solutions, a t-shirt company, following reports of an altercation. Both men at the time were found with severe lacerations and punctured wounds from sharp-edged weapons, a statement from the Gaylord Police Department is reported to have said. Both men were transported to hospital where the 33-year-old man died from his injuries while the other man underwent emergency surgery. Both men have since been identified as temporary workers from Jamaica with reports coming forward that the deceased is a firefighter employed to the Jamaica Fire Brigade. It is being reported that he was on leave from the organization at the time of his death. Cops identify alleged robbers killed in St. Thomas. Police have identified the three men killed in an early morning gun battle with a lawman in Poor Man's Corner, St. Thomas, on Thursday. The men were fatally shot after allegedly attempting to break into a liquor store. Those killed are 35 year old German Chamberlain from Tulip Lane, 22 year old Jahim McDonald, otherwise called Jigs, and Bibi, a warehouse assistant from Milk Lane and Damien Fairweather from Pink Lane, all in Kingston 14. Reports were that a businessman, upon arriving at his establishment, stumbled upon a vehicle which aroused his suspicion. Upon investigating, he was reportedly fired upon by men emerging from his business place. He reportedly returned the fire, causing the men to flee in the vehicle. The police were subsequently alerted and a description of the getaway car given. The lawmen went in pursuit of the vehicle. The police entered the Grand Span community where they saw a group of men and the two vehicles parked on the roadway. The men fired at the police who returned the fire. Reports said after the shootout, the men were found suffering from gunshot wounds. They were rushed to the hospital where they were later pronounced dead. A 9mm pistol with a magazine and five live rounds were taken from the scene. Lack of staff, bed spaces, transportation plague facility. No major surgeries were required for the wounded victims of the Cherry Tree Lane massacre in Fort Pats Clarendon last Sunday. By last Thursday, only two of those who had arrived at Mipen Hospital's accident and emergency department were still admitted. However, this tragedy, believed to be the first of its scale in Jamaica's gang history, has intensified ongoing concerns among the facility's staff. They have long lamented shortages of equipment, hospital beds, manpower and transportation, especially in a parish that frequently deals with gunshot wounds from violent gang clashes. Four days after the gruesome attack, Dr. Bradley Edwards, senior medical officer at the hospital, said that last Sunday night's influx of patients tested the hospital's mass casualty protocols. It drained the resources, such as painkillers and medication, for controlling severe bleeding and, most importantly, highlighted a significant shortage of hospital staff and a bed space at the facility. This is exacerbated by the constant stream of accident and gunshot wound victims in the Mid-Island Parish, which up to August 3 had recorded 41 murders and 41 shooting incidents since the start of the year. Many of those victims required emergency surgeries and hospital beds. The trauma cases do take up a significant amount of resources to manage from the hospital and also from those persons with regard to time and spaces. That is some of the sad things about not having enough staff to relieve people, said Edwards, noting the heavy physical and emotional toll on staff having to deal with frequent motor vehicle accidents and the gunshot wound trauma cases entering the hospital. Unlike in other countries where staff are given time off after certain gruesome incidents, staff at the Mipen Hospital are not afforded that luxury. This is because the demand for their presence is unrelentingly high. 
So too is the demand on bed spaces. Right now, the demand on the spaces in the hospital is so high that a lot of patients end up staying in the A&E department awaiting an opportunity to be admitted to the ward. When our A&E is full, we have to be moving patients around until we can sort out something, he continued. The hospital is pretty short-staffed in the A&E department and right now is not necessarily a good time to come to the hospital with any trauma. Meanwhile, hospital staff continue to be on the edge. Many of them are residents of communities entangled in a bloody web of gang violence. Now, Edwards hopes measures can be taken by the Ministry of Health and Wellness to provide a transportation for staff. If we can get a staff bus or some staff buses to pick up people at their homes and carry them to work at night, that would be something we would want, Edwards told the news. Last Friday, Health Minister Christopher Tufton empathized with the hospital's staff, noting that other public facilities have been set up in the parish to ease the strain on Maypen. There are also physical expansions planned for that hospital and other health facilities in the parish, Tufton added. The truth is that where multiple trauma cases come in, it will more than likely lead to delays. We don't normally have 17 people being shot in one incident and so, whatever the staff complement is normally, we have to call for backup or call people in and in the case of hospital beds, depending on the nature of the trauma, there will be an increased demand on space, he explained. For this reason, the Chapelton Hospital has been reopened and there has also been expansion at the Lionel Town Hospital, which has more doctors and offers a range of services. There is also a plan under a program with the Inter-American Development Bank to expand the Maypen Hospital as well. It is hard to plan, predict and have staffing and the several bed spaces for victims of gunshot wounds at the same time because these are all victims which would have a demand on operating theater time, emergency surgery and intensive care if necessary, continued the health minister. So one has to see this an Outler event. And God knows, I hope that we don't see too much of a recurrence of this, he said, noting that arrangements such as staff transportation are negotiated between the hospitals and their different regional authorities. Opposition warns of crisis in health sector as UHWI halts patient transfers. The parliamentary opposition is sounding the alarm that the country's health care sector is facing a crisis that could lead to deaths of patients in need of medical treatment. The alarm follows a decision by the University Hospital of the West Indies to seize the transfers from all other hospitals and their private health facilities at this time. The UHWI on Thursday announced that it has put a temporary hold on accepting patient transfers due to an increase in the number of patients in the hospital's emergency room. The hospital says 90% of patients in the emergency room are presenting with complications from chronic non-communicable diseases. As a result, the emergency room has reached the full capacity. The UHWI has requested that all private and public hospitals, as well as nursing homes, retain stable patients until the situation improves. Opposition spokesperson on health and wellness, Dr. Alfred Dawes, is urging the Ministry of Health to be transparent and forthcoming about the state of health care in Jamaica. According to Dr. Dawes, the unprecedented decision by the University Hospital confirms what users and workers in the public health system have been saying for months that the health sector is in a state of crisis. There are a total of three type A hospitals in Jamaica, the KPH, the Cornell Regional Hospital, as well as the University Hospital. These are the hospitals where all other hospitals would send their sickest patients and those who are in need of specialist care available only at these type A hospitals. With the fact that, given the fact that the Cornell Regional Hospital has been out of commission for the greater part of eight years, and now the University Hospital is not taking any transfers from public or private hospitals, we are left with a situation where only the already burdened, overburdened Kingston Public Hospital is left to shoulder the weight of the entire healthcare system in Jamaica, both public and private. This in turn is going to have a knock-on effect on all hospitals because they 
when faced with the need to transfer critically ill patients are now going to be less stuck monitoring and treating those patients in suboptimal environments we're going to see a situation where the morbidity and the mortality rates are going to go up across the island if we cannot get back to the situation where the sickest patients can be transferred to a type A hospital. Guys, thanks for watching. Please join us this afternoon at 2 p.m. for another news update.